Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome. Episode 126, the Reaction Squad podcast. Special, special guests here. We have Paul Rugg and Tom Ruger. Hi there. <laughs> hello. Hello. Hey, there's, a, there's a picture on the Twitter that makes me look like I'm going to burp into a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I know. That's why I don't show my face. Thanks for that. Thanks for that. Yes. The picture of him, yeah. Pretty classic. <laughs> also, we have Richard Kenobi, which I'm still going to call him that forever. I'm sure he's got a new name now. I he do can have definitely a new update, name. He can update you on that. And also Humanoid Freak, which I'm pretty sure his name stems from, you guessed it, Freakazoid. So, anyways, yeah. With that being said, I'll let Richard talk for a little bit, introduce himself as well, and Humanoid, and then obviously Paul and Tom. <laughs> uh, hi, uh, I'm I'm Richard. Um, I'm a longtime collaborator of uh, the Reaction Podcast. I haven't actually done a podcast. I'm out of uh, I've been out of the game for a while, but now um, thanks to this, I'm now here talking to my two favorite heroes and my and my friend uh, Nidge. And it, it's it's an honor to be here. So you know, thank you for having me. Um, it, it's great to be here. <laughs> I got nothing else. I'm nervous. <laughs> don't, don't be, don't be. Don't no. be nervous. Okay. And I'm humanoid. Like I've been watching Freakazoid since I was a kid. It's like rewatching this as an adult. The like, humor is way funnier now. And it's really an honor to talk yeah. to you guys right now. <laughs> yes. Yeah, a lot of that stuff went over my head as a kid, and now it's like, oh, I see what y'all did there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. These these oh. these guys were my heroes. <laughs> I, I actually bought those, but they yeah. got they were not showing up to them after July. So I was like, oh. so I turned around and bought even them digitally on the internet on uh, Amazon to watch them just to kind of remind you know you know just kind of get more you know back into it you know. So I'm up to speed again because it's been it's, yeah it's been a while since I've seen it. So uh, go ahead, Paul. Me. No, Paul, am I breaking up? Oh, oh, there we go. Now I now I can hear you. Hello. Sorry, there's a storm coming through, so I hope it's I'm not affecting everything. Oh, yes. Did did you have a question for me? I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, were just, we, were just, we were just introducing everybody just... real quick and your oh, turn Hi everyone. Hi, I'm Paul. I'm I worked with Tom Ruger on Animaniacs and Freakazoid and other shows that maybe you would like to pay us for it at some point in the near future and uh, yeah that's everything. that's everything i can that's tell you really yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh am i am i i don't i'm not supposed to talk now right let's go to questions, questions <laughs> the no. panel. yes right. our freak a panel right now <laughs> <laughs> uh. all right the first questions are uh Richard, you were taking the first view. Yes, yes, I am. Um, so, the story goes back as long as time itself. It began in the dawn of the era known as the '90s. You guys were on a hit with uh, such memorable shows like, like um, Animaniacs and Pinky and the Brain. And uh, Paul and uh, started working with you for a while, Tom. Um, and then it's. It's the mid '90s. It's it's 1995, and now you got to come up with a new hit, and it it has to be a superhero show, something that um you you have experience in because you were an executive producer uh, on Batman the animated series, but you're told it can't be dark and serious because Steven likes he likes it to be funny. He the kids they like the comedy. <laughs> um, so how did how did Freakazoid start? Like, like well, what led to it? Yes, uh, uh, Paul Dini and Bruce Tim were uh, working with Steven Spielberg uh, for months on uh, Freakazoid on a, a comedy show. Uh, Bruce came up with the design. Paul Dini came up with a lot of the, the situations and, and uh, some of the characters. And then uh, Steven said, no, funnier. And then they went back and they made it funnier. No, funnier, Steven said. <laughs> and, uh, and at that point, he was really loving uh, all the work that was being done on Animaniacs. And, and he said, 
I want it to be like Animaniacs, basically. And uh, I think Bruce was like, well, uh, I'm making Batman. I'm, I'm in I'm in that uh, zone, so I don't think I want to go make Animaniacs at the same time. So anyway, they kicked it over to uh, me, and Stephen said, you know, uh, and so I – and it was January or December or January before the September that it needed to go on the air. So we had made Animaniacs a few years before. We had like a two two year lead time. So now we had like a nine month lead time. So it was really frantic. So the first thing I did, I walked down the hall and I went to uh, Paul Rugg and John uh, McCann's offices and I said, "You two, you, <laughs> hey, how you want to you want to do a funny." superhero and they're like not really but <laughs> yeah. they, they they were game for it and uh then i'm gonna let paul start talking yes i want to hear paul's side of the story <laughs> no, I, I, but we had as we were we were just wrapping up uh animaniacs i think or we were sort of we were i don't remember what we were doing, we were we're doing like after a certain season of it yeah and uh, I, we had heard that, you know, uh, Paul Dini and Bruce had been working on this thing and it had been going on forever. And, and, and then Tom literally, as he said, he came in, John McCann and I were just sort of sitting in my office and just sort of enjoying not doing anything. And Tom said, uh, we're, uh, have you heard about this Freakazoid show? And I'm like, yeah. And we thought he was going to say, well, it's over and we're all going to do something else. And he said, well, now nah. I'm like, oh, dear, that's unfortunate because we didn't want to write a superhero show um because that just wasn't in i mean we didn't really know what what that was but uh and then tom said okay so um whether you like it or not uh it's the christmas break and we all have to work on the show now so um and so i think i went into it very begrudgingly or like <laughs> uh, what is this what are we doing you know um but but then uh i think a week into it we we talked about it. I was really happy that it it came along because um, I mean Tom kind of Mr. Ruger there sort of was like <laughs> we're just gonna we're just gonna play a, a, around. It's gonna be weird and bizarre and um, and that kind of appeal. Oh. Nice thing was we were already late, so so the show was late. I mean we we were we should have been in production for months and months and months ahead of time. So there wasn't a lot of time to think. And I think ultimately that was a blessing. It was like, I don't know. Yeah, I have no idea. One of right. the, We're just um, going to do it. So, yeah, yeah, one of the uh, the things that I kind of, re I think you guys did this intentionally that represents the struggle uh, to get it out at the time it was supposed to, <clears throat> excuse me, was the promos. There, there were no traditional promos for this show. There was an occasional, there was a poster, but then there were these black and white promos that had voiceovers telling everybody that the show is being worked on it'll be done when it's done there's no footage yeah. there's 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 nothing to kind of give us uh insight as to what we can expect from this it's they, just they, they were a parody of cruise commercials back then yeah and, uh, they were black and white and they were like cruise ships in a caribbean island and were, you know just simple uh, beautiful paintings drawings you know here at Freakazoid, we don't know what we're doing. We're just, <laughs> we're really behind schedule. We don't get this done soon. We'll be fired. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. I guess and that's then, what... then it was a Freakazoid coming this fall on the Kids WB. Uh, so we did a bunch of those, and uh, they, they explained nothing about the show. Absolutely zero. Yeah, there was like zero press information. It just said from the creators of Animaniacs comes Freakazoid, and that's it. We had nothing to go on, um, but then it comes out, and it's... That must have been a surprise. Yeah, yeah, no, it's like, it, it's it's here. It's like, oh my God, it's like so much agony. <laughs> it's like, because it was supposed to be so many different things. It's like, it was a, it was like Frankenstein's monster come to life for animation. Because I remember Bruce Tim, he wanted it to be darker and he wanted it to have kind of lean towards mature jokes. But then the finished product, it's like, no, it's not dark at all. In fact... I, I think people wouldn't 
would would people would assume that this is somehow connected to Animaniacs. Like maybe this was just a new segment, but then when they watch the show, they're like, oh my god, this is a show? This is, like, this is amazing. <laughs> Yeah, we felt the very same thing. We we're like, really? We're, it's it's on the air? Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm shocked. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's like, oh my god, finally, it's here. It, it after so long, it's here. So based based on some of those uh, time uh, constraints, for lack of better words, uh, you get it's like in a sense, like you said, it's kind of like a blessing in disguise, right? Looking back at it, and well, I know there was very little like, waste. There was very little waste. You see. The, the blessing was that anything we wrote was immediately put into production and, <laughs> and turned yeah. into a cartoon. Whether yeah. it was uh, great or good or okay or bad, or, I mean, we we were just, come on, let's get everything it out there. was at everything was thrown in there. There were yeah. it sounds like you had no studio meddling either. They just kind of just told you we have no. one one order, get it out. Don't care how, just do it. We don't care what you do. Well, there was no time for meddling. No, no, no. Mm -mm. So, mm -mm. so John and Paul wrote, uh, you know, just tons of, of uh, great, funny, funny segments. And it, as long as they were funny, uh, I think the three of us were very happy. And then Mitch Sharer was producing it. And uh, it was uh, uh, just... I, I, I re learned recently that uh, Tim Walker, one of the great animators of our era... He was he supervised oversees the main title of the Freakazoid uh, segment that that Mitch Shower boarded and directed. Oh my and, god! Uh, and, and that that's a that's a good example of like the the sort of the, the the concept of the show because Freakazoid in that main title it's it's very silly. I mean, we got live action monkeys jumping on. Yes, on. <laughs> you you have you have things that you have the villains that'll be shown throughout the series. Um, you you have. Uh, I don't know if this was a foreshadowing joke, but you have a fo you introduce the freak mobile, which uh, is kind of meant to be a play on uh, on the, the the toys that get made from these cartoons. But Freakazoid never got a toy or any toy license from them. And then, of course, the most obscure thing that you s that everybody asked about, and I don't know what answers you provide, but you introduced Freakazette um, at the end of that um, Animaniacs. Mm -hmm. uh song to kind of hype it up after the main title sure in the first episode that's right yeah and we we didn't know what we we're doing on any of it so uh, yeah we had no idea who yeah. freak is it was yeah no, no right. we didn't there, there was there, there was actually zero ulterior motive we we're like yeah just tom sort of wrote and we're like yeah that's great fine yeah. i mean there was like we didn't know we had no it idea. rhymed with a word that ended with et like 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 Jeanette, like Jeanette, kind of, I guess. <laughs> so so still, twenty eight years later, you guys don't know who Freakazoid Freakazette is. Like, oh yeah, we know, but we we have to get paid. Yeah, again. but we're not oh, allowed to okay, yeah. so that's staying in the back. Yeah, yeah. Okay. we have to do a reboot. Oh, oh boy, um, <laughs> that's exciting. Yes. Um, so what what I was what I was getting at was uh, it seemed like at least for my time and. One of you can correct me, but when I was watching, when I watched it, it seemed like you, you you all started like the whole meme thing of shows, like you know, like you randomly yeah, you put those old people clapping stuff like that in the cutaways, that. yeah, 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 like that. I've never seen that before. I mean, maybe there was something before that's done that, but at least in cartoons, right? It seems like yeah, it was no. like one, of, one of the first. It was like yeah, like like yeah, no, we here. invented, we yeah. we clearly invented that well, yeah, and like anyone that's ever done it in the future should uh, should bow down to us no no, no. I, I mean i think we had seen that done in Py python yeah um, i mean okay. certainly we certainly knew or were influenced by python by you know all all that all the great comedies by um you know the jack benny show which i know you're like wait a minute what but but that's <laughs> like all that all that kind of hip hip stuff or the first 20 minutes of wheeler and wolsey's uh <laughs> you know, what's wheeler and Woolsey? it was uh anyway hell's a pop in the first 20 minutes yeah 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 yeah, then, yeah 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 for cartoons yeah, so, right like i've never seen that in cartoons before at least so that's well we we yeah we didn't we we sort of as as tom said we we kind of like tom would go edit with um i think the first season, Tom Al Breitenbach was doing it with you, and then yeah. uh, Joe Gall, or I'm not quite quite sure, yeah, but both of them. Yep. But yeah, but we had also um, Al Breitenbach, who was who was 
one, one of our editors, uh, he had access to the Warner Brothers film library. And right. he came in one day and said, I, I didn't. I, uh, uh oh, well, I, like, he came in and said, I, I found some really great footage. Yeah. I think you'll like it. And what right, was it yeah. called? It was just like the weirdest stuff. It was stuff in the Warner Brothers library that we had access to. And so we were like, yeah, let's th throw all that stuff in. So he would almost take it as a badge of honor to go, I got something really weird. I got something really strange. It's a monkey of do whatever. I forget. And, and, and um, so, yeah. So that's sort of became that, 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 that was sort of the one of the uh, one of the feathers in our quiver or a quiver in our yeah. cap or whatever. But but we we certainly use that to great effect, I think. Yeah, yeah. One of my favorites was when they were on the carts and the uh, after that long song of the big brain dude, they were chasing each the other. Lobe. On the carts. The lobe. Yeah, the lobe. Yeah. And they crashed into the wall. They're fucking new cloud. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was just yeah. so random. It was great. It was great. Uh, are, are, are you hearing music or is it just me? No, I'm hearing it too. I didn't know we have. Holy, do we have music now? No. We have background music. Yeah. John, That's turn down, awesome. Just, turn it down just a little bit, John. I think it might be. Is it too loud or? Wow, it's like uh, relaxo vision. I may fall asleep. Yes. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> or screamo vision. Or scream. Or scream. <laughs> <laughs> so uh john mccann wrote um this episode called dance of doom and john yes. was one of the he's a producer and a writer on the series really a hilarious person and uh so dance of doom was written and we were we were we were desperate to get a voice for freakazoid and we didn't have yes. one yet and uh we had auditioned everybody in town and everybody was coming in and going ah, i'm freaking so i'm freaky ah! and uh we realized that would be uh, probably <laughs> sustaining that for half an hour. <laughs> Might be legendary, but canceled. So, uh, yeah. so Paul, uh, story editor, writer, and and uh, producer on the show, we were at a recording session, uh, or we had an audition session, and we I said, Paul, give us at least something. Give us an idea of what could it, what it could be. So he went into the booth and recorded the Dance of Doom script. And then when it was done, and it was good, and, and he, he was silly sometimes, he was smart at some other time. And then we said, hey, Paul, how about improving some sections of this, just sort of like going off script and doing stuff. And that's really where Freakazoid, I think, gelled at that moment. That's when it was like, oh, my gosh, because Paul right Rudd there. is a genius at improvisation. So what was some of the stuff you improv that they remember, Paul? Oh, well, I think uh, we were um, the whole low bridge, everybody down. Yes. <laughs> that was a good one. Oh, I think he froze again. And oh, uh, I know he, I know he did some uh, improv on the Candle J show. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, that was all that was was that was uh, a lot of imp improvisation tom said at one, one point stop and become like uh director jerry and sort of talk about cosgrove eddie asner a lovable guy i kiss him every day <laughs> and these kids and i think that take went on for like five minutes and i'm just talking <laughs> until tom was like okay i think we're done and um but oh, but man. but but yeah but we we improvise a ton and i think tom's right we sort of uh, we re realized, oh, you know what? We're not story based. Like, we're not going to try to tell a story and wrap it up. We realized then it was like, oh, this is just fun. This is just we're just going to have some fun with these with these characters. Um, and that uh, I remember I went I, I, I went into the booth and I'm like, well, what should I say? You know, and he goes, just I'll tell you when to just go crazy. And that's what I did. So, yeah. <laughs> and Stephen approved of it. Yes, we sent it to Stephen, and uh, we actually have a, an audio cassette of Stephen's reaction because we, uh, we, nice. we, we audio nice. the phone call when he was calling. Well, I, I finally saw all the, uh, the, the, the two episodes of Freakazoid that you sent, and, uh, and he loved it, and he's, but he said, I think you go on too long on certain things, and so you have to trim that back. But the problem was we were going on the air in like a week, and we had, no other, we had no other footage to fill in those gaps, so it wasn't we weren't able to edit 
anything out. So right. that's why the entire improv for Dance of Doom is in, and I think uh, I'm glad we kept it in. Yes, um, absolutely. He um, also, in that first phone call, he said, uh, I love Hand Man, he loved that, but I hate, I hate Moron, that character. That, oh! That, uh, I hate him, oh. and, I, I, and I don't want to see him. And, <laughs> and I, I put, bury this into the last episode, but again, this was uh, when we were getting our footage in, it was in August, and we're going to go on the air in like a week or so, and uh, we had already... And he had been busy with other things and hadn't been reading the scripts. And we had already written uh, an episode that featured, you know, a half hour of Moron uh, coming down like E.T. And uh, so to to satisfy Stephen's desires that he doesn't see Moron again, we changed Moron's name to Boron. <laughs> Boron. Boron. Done. That, yeah, done. <laughs> done. No more Moron. No. Oh, that's sad though. I liked Moron. I oh, thought no, we, we liked him, and he kept stayed in the show. That, that, that that's all that matters. Uh, yeah. Well, you you talk about improvisation and stuff that was just thrown in there. Um, I'm not. I know. I'm. I know it's a little too soon, but I have to ask: Was Batman part of that? Like when we see Batman in there for the first episode, we see no. his silhouette. No, 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 no. That 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 was all written by John Mc McCann. So so the thing is, is a lot of people say, well, that must have been improvised. That was a crazy thing. John McCann is like the most brilliant writer, and he's just bizarre and weird and funny. And John wrote all all that stuff stuff in. Basically, anytime you hear like a ho, I love the road, that's improvised because that's me just being Jerry Lewis. But um, uh, right. but any like clever lines, that's pretty much John McCann or think, Tom yeah, Ruger. I think John so, John wrote the pull the string thing, didn't it, for the Bella Lugosi thing. But pull the string, we, yeah, yeah. We we had, or you did. I don't know. Yeah, we we had just all seen Ed Wood. Um, oh. With oh, the nice. John, Johnny Depp, and we were like, we were big fans of that of that movie, and specifically, we were big fans of um, Martin, Martin Landau. Landau. Yeah. Yes, and uh, pull the string, and so we just decided to put that in, and nobody cared. But again, if if I tell you how much nobody cared about everything we were doing, <laughs> it just sort of it just sort of went and was animated, and at like, and I think about something like pull the string, you know, being approved today, people are. So what is that? Well, yeah. it's, it's a rev reverence that, like, we would never have gotten away with any of that, ever, ever, yeah. ever, ever. It's like as a kid, when you seen that for the first time, like, I didn't understand any of that. And then I grew up, started watching Ed Wood films, and I saw Bride of Frankenstein, Bride of the Monster, was it? Where he said... Right, right, yes. Yeah, where That's he says, funny. pull the sting! And then I went back and watched Megazoid, <laughs> and we finally said it, I couldn't stop I think it was, it was Glenn or Glenda, wasn't it? Glenn or Glenda, Glenda, pull the string? I think it was yeah. Is it Glenn or Glenn or was it Bride of the Monster? I think I think it was Bride of the Monster. Okay. Yeah, it must have been Bride of the Monster. Bride, Bride yeah. of the Monster, yeah, because he was the puppet master, right? Yeah, I love yeah. that we all know what Bride of the Monster is. I I've, I love the Boris Karloff movies, so and I love and I, I'm a sucker for any <laughs> references to those movies. So also just about Al Bratton back. So uh, yes, go ahead. Paul, Paul improv this thing. I well, I, I and. Uh, his girlfriend's saying, why did you do that? For so Now we're all tied up. He says, well, I wanted to just do something like, uh, you know, on, on F Troop, when yes. uh, Sergeant O'Rourke would say, you know, you're going to wear a dress, Agar. I'm not going to wear a dress. You're going to wear a dress, Agar. And then you go, and there's Agar in a dress. So uh, <laughs> Paul Rudd said that, and Al Breitenbach said, I've got this Paris Stoltz footage. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> nice. And uh, that was just a wonderful ad there. Oh my god, that, that's <laughs> I think that's the charm though of the first season is the segments and all of the this this whole world. It kind of like it must have been somewhat inspired by Animaniacs because Animaniacs is best known not just for the Warners but for the whole cast. And Freakazoid now had that cast, uh, and it had many different characters. Some that would be one-offs like Toby Danger, and other ones yeah. that would have recurring uh, segments like the Huntsman or Lord Bravery. I, I like I like the Danger one. <laughs> yes, like, Toby oh, Danger. So <laughs> like, and they start, they deliberately do the cheap graphics chop. Yeah, yes, and and, <laughs> and you actually. 
and, and you actually got the voice of um, of Benton uh, Quest from the original Johnny Quest series to play uh, to, to oh, play wow. Toby's dad. Don yeah, Don Messenger. Yeah, Don Don Messenger. Yes. Um, well, that that was a Tom Mitten written script and uh, uh, brilliantly executed. I know uh, Mitch Shower, our producer, was a huge Johnny Quest fan, so he really made it made sure it was like. <laughs> yes. It was, I, I, I love that. Like, this was hilarious. Yeah, that that is. That's probably one of my favorite segments because I love Johnny Quest. I watched that with my father when I was very young, and any and it was just so cool to see some some Johnny Quest love. But I was like, oh man, it sucks that that's only one segment. Well, yeah, the, but clearly it had absolutely nothing to do with Freakazoid. No, 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 no. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, Freakazoid didn't even walk through. No, no he <laughs> did it. Yeah. He, he's too busy. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, he all of a sudden the Yeah, he's like, yeah. That's what <laughs> yeah, that didn't happen, but... There, there just must have been so much fun on that first season with all of those different segments uh, and those characters. Well, there was no one, again, no one telling us no, but there was also no. Uh, everyone was saying, "Get it done, get it done." So it, there was a yeah. lot of pressure to to get the thing grappled. Yeah. Up. Yeah. Well, um, so, well. Now that I we're done with, I, I like to cleverly segue into uh, my second question, uh, which does involve season two, because that seemed to be where okay, they didn't say no to you, and they didn't give you any rules or meddling in the first season, but once they saw. Freakazoid season one come out, there were significant changes in season two. Gone were the segments with the characters, and now it was just as the title uh, is telling you, it's all about Freakazoid. Um, right. Was there any? Um, what, what, what did the studio tell you to do that, or did, was that just yes. something that okay, you just decided to like okay, let's focus on Freakazoid. Hmm. Like, oh, how did that affect your second season process? I'm wondering. Well, so, so Tom, you were about to do ro Road Rovers, right? Yeah, I think you're about to. Paul, right. took, Paul, and John took over the the producing uh, title, and I was just yeah, like that. yeah. So Tom, <laughs> Tom was like, "I'll I'll be here, but I'm I'm I want to do Road Rovers now because I'm exhausted from the first season of Freak Freakazoid." And then Gene McCurdy came into the John, uh, took John McCann and I out to lunch at a place called the Smokehouse, which is right across from Warner Brothers. It's the uh -oh. most amazing place. And she's like, do you guys want to be the producers of the show? And we both said, no, we don't really want to be the producers of the show. <laughs> she Bruce at all. and Eric Radomsky, y'all. <laughs> yeah. And she, and we, we were like, no, that's really, cause that's not fun. You know, we would rather have fun. She goes, well, what if it could be fun? <laughs> <laughs> and we're like, well, okay, keep talking. And she goes, I'll take you to the, take you to the smokehouse a lot. And, like, okay, so, and Gene, Gene was, and by the way, Gene, Gene McCurdy is kind of the reason that Tom and I and John McCann and everybody got to play, right? Yeah. She was the, she was the guard making sure that the uh, sandbox was not infiltrated by evil. Okay, she was so, an angel. Yeah. Uh, so a anyway, she goes, all right, well, now that you've said yes to being producers, in five minutes, we have to be at Warner Brothers for a meeting. <laughs> what? <Come on. laughs> with with um, Jamie Kellner and the uh, Suzanne Daniels. And these are all the they kind of they, they they kind of were running kids WB and kids WB. And they had they had decided that the reason Freakazoid it wasn't hitting its target demographic was is because uh it didn't make any sense and they were what we think you should do you know in order to make more sense why don't you do what oh yeah we, we have an idea why don't you just tell a long freakazoid story and we're like mm, okay you know if that's what you want and they, they go yeah you know because we don't want to do it we're like fine um little did they know that we had no intention of making any sense um and frankly for me telling the longer freakazoid stories allowed for more diversions anyway of bizarreness and weirdness but yeah it, it was sad to loot huntsman it was sad to loot low bravery it was sad to not be able to do anything else but um but but we sort of roll with the rolled with that and um but we kind of also knew this we knew that the network kind of hated the show 
uh, oh, that was sort of a given. They were like, you know, we really don't, we really don't like this. So we knew that we. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, but Stephen, Stephen liked it a lot. So, um, <laughs> so we just started writing again. Oh, nope. I've lost myself. Yeah. Not not only did Tom kind of have to step away to sort of like uh, uh, super supervise road, road rovers, but we also lost Mitch Shower. So we brought in Rich Aaron's, who did our uh, who's the producer of Animaniacs, um, and he sort of stepped st stepped in. But but it it had you know season two had had its own struggles and stuff. But um, yeah, and but the uh, but what was nice was knowing that Tom <laughs> had our back, Stephen had our back, Gene McCurdy had our back, and um, yeah, but we also knew we there wasn't going to be a third se season. Just ne was never going to happen. So we all we also knew we were canceled halfway through writing the uh, se second season. So you know we were just having fun by that point. So right. You had great uh, guest stars in the second season. Well, you yeah, had, uh, Ricardo Montalban he played a kind of a bigger role in the second season, didn't he? He did. Right. Yeah, he did. He did. Yeah. He became and, uh, his own freakazoid. The yeah, Island of Dr. Did. Mystico starred uh, Tim Curry. Yes, the late Tim Curry. Tim Curry. Yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. Why did I say late? Sorry. He's still. He's still yeah. with us. Excuse me. Yeah. Uh, and we had. We can, uh, edit that. Uh, we can edit that out, right? Yeah, we can edit that out. <laughs> Tim Curry, I'm sorry. I love you. Please don't kill me. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we had yeah we had them. We had Tim. Uh, who else did we had? We had uh, Norm Abram. <laughs> yeah, Norm Abram <laughs> it makes me laugh that we uh, think of him as a as, as a great star. Ah, uh, of course, throughout and, the series we had Ed Asner. Yeah, that's yeah. that's that's what I was. Uh, that I I mixed Tim Joe, Curry with Ed Asner. Joe, Joe, Joe Leahy. Yes, Joe, the great Leahy, Joe yeah. Leahy, who's. A, the awesome announcer and who became his own character who would interact with Freakazoid on occasion, especially the episode where he needed Freakazoid's advice because Freakazoid had to help people. Um, that was part of uh, the hero's code as the low well, told him. Joe, was, Joe Layton's character was trying to um, uh, become a, a Shakespearean actor. Yeah, um, a better then, actor. Then the, 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 oh. the butler, the new butler in season two. Yes. Was yeah. Jonathan Harris. That's yes, awesome. <laughs> Doctor Doctor Smith from Lost in Space. Yeah, I mean, so and and again, it was just like we were just have, having fun. We we're just yeah. having fun. But, we were just having fun. Were there any drawbacks though uh, to um, now doing Freakazoid season two uh, in the um, untraditional sense? Because it seems, ironically, season one was untraditional in how it just threw everything at the window and it was all about trying to have a good time and make this something pleasant to watch uh no matter what uh the mood is but now season two it's like okay it, it's a superhero show but that kind of defeats what season one was supposed to be because the joke is freakazoid is a superhero but you know he is his own superhero he's not a superhero like batman or superman where he has morals or values he's just <laughs> he, has, he has no morals no values well, okay well let me let me what, what the, 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 the more no 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 the traditional morals like he has good centered morals that uh apply that apply to him and the world he's in but batman and superman they're they're about you're like okay don't uh okay i'm trying to Think of a way to save myself, but no, there's it's no way, there's no way you can't save yourself. You're doing. I know. It. I'm sorry. I'm just, no, that's okay. That's okay. I, I, th I think what he means is Freakazoid is unique <laughs> in the way how he takes care of business. Yes, versus yeah. the others. Like, yeah, the yeah. others are kind of get to the point. Well, I, I think that that's obviously the whole. That yeah, I that's the whole uniqueness of him. Yeah, and I yeah. think that maintains throughout season two. I mean, he's still absolutely yeah. batty, and uh, he he solves things in his own crazy unique way yeah. and and i think i i certainly think uh cosgrove plays a, a more sort of central role in season two yes it's like yeah it's, it's like it's yeah. more of a buddy thing it's yeah. it's it's he he's hang, hanging out with his buddy but the other thing too about c season two is what we really wanted to continue was the fact that freakazoid and cosgrove in the lobe and everybody knew that they were in a show i mean yes. that was vital Everybody, we're just we're just saying the words here written on the script, and we're not taking any of this seriously. That was kind of the, 
I mean, yeah. and, and we sort of developed that in uh, the only half hour we wrote for Tom was, was the chip, the only, the only long form freakazoid we ever did in the first okay. season. The, the, oh, the first season. How about the one with uh, the, the, they were singing uh, the long song. Uh, yeah. Was that, a, was that a half hour? The, 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 Hello I'm, Dolly. Is that a half hour episode? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that was the that was supposed to be in um that was supposed yeah. to be in season one. But remember, right. we had to carry carry it over because it was such a complicated yeah. piece. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, but but again, for us, season two kind of felt okay because we were just going to goof wh whether the network liked it or not. So we were just like, you know, and, and then sometimes we'd bring Dexter in. Sometimes we pretended like Dexter never even existed. Yeah. You know, it was like <laughs> wh whatever we needed to do. We did. Yep. That does seem to be um, the theme of season two, you know, like, well, it is more Freakazoid and not Dexter. Because the show is not Dexter, Freakazoid, it's Freakazoid. Um, you you're, you're sound a little like you're underwater right now. I do. Yes. yes. It's kind of cutting out a little bit, unfortunately. Oh, uh, that's terrible. Well, now I hear you well. Uh, okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I'm checking my voice settings. But um, yeah, no, what I was trying to say is um, so it sounds like, yeah, Freakazoid season two took out more. It, it took, we saw less of Dexter, and it seemed mm -hmm. like uh, Freakazoid was kind of, you know, the main star, the main person. And I do remember that we did see scenes where we would see Freakazoid in Dexter's mind and we see things from his perspective. Um, so that kind of does prove it's like, okay, yeah, Dexter might as well just be um, the gateway to which Freakazoid enters through. He's, they're not actually the same person. They're two mm -hmm. different people inhabiting one body. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And, I, I, I think true. maybe that's why I like Dexter so much because I loved his reactions to these things and how uh, Freakazoid would just have to come in and kind of, you know, uh, help out because Dexter couldn't do anything, especially um, in the werewolf episode, which was obviously a love to the Lon Chaney Wolfman uh, mm -hmm. movie, which I loved. Well, that's, that's a Mitch Shower uh, directed episode and he is, uh, one of the great uh, aficionados of that whole uh, universal monster period. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Those, those were, those were some great ones. Those were some great ones. I, I appreciated that. Um, well, I guess my next question is you brought, we brought up Tim Curry. Um, how much fun did you, did he have voicing um, his character? Well, let me think he, he came in, um, uh, I mean, it was just a one day thing, right? So he came in with yes. all the other actors. I remember though, on that day, we had Tim Curry, we had uh, Leonard Malton, we had uh, <laughs> we had David Warner, we had Jonathan Harris, and Jonathan wow. Harris. Wow. Wow. I think was so fun uh, uh, for some, well, not for some reason, but they decided to get a, a, a camera crew in uh that day because leonard malton was doing his, i forget what show he was on then you know and uh they wanted to follow leonard around being in a cartoon show right and the right. camera the camera people in the interview was was focusing a lot on uh, on tim curry <laughs> and jonathan harris came in and goes of course they focus on him <laughs> <laughs> which which if you knew jonathan was yes. was so perfect but also so Perfect. It was like that. That was very John, John, Jonathan. But uh, but uh, but the other thing I'll, I'll say, and they don't do it this way and anymore. But we recorded as an entire cast. I mean, yes. sometimes, some, sometimes I would have to do myself uh, do my stuff after, so that I could be a part of the note process and stuff. Not not when Tom was there, because normally I would just be in there in the in the but behind the mic. But but some sometimes. Um, uh, but it would so if you can imagine um, Tim Curry, Jonathan Harris, yes. uh, David Warner. Um, uh, uh, I think we also had Maurice LaMarche. We had um, uh, Tress McNeil. Oh, we yes, he, Tress. and and uh, Ed Ed Asner and uh, and then at some at one point in that script we had this the uh, the cast had to sing carefully on tiptoe stealing, which is for <laughs> mom. <laughs> 
which is from Gilbert and Sullivan. And um, I was like, oh, man, this is, is going to be a disaster, right? <laughs> which which kind of was my hope. But uh, <laughs> uh, but then Tim Curry, I guess, and David Warner, obviously. I mean, they had yes. done Gilbert and Sullivan some point when they were kids or whatever. And yeah. I just remember they – and Ed Asner. And they all sang it like – Wow. And, <laughs> They, they and, threw their uh, parts into it. Yeah, but but as far as Tim Curry doing his like they called me mad and saying Wendell, um, I think all Andrea <laughs> told him was uh, Tim, what however you want to be this mad insane guy, go for it. And we just kind of sat there and listened. And I think it was all one take for Tim Tim Curry. Really? Oh. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 The yeah. thing about yeah. Tim Curry, he did a lot of voice acting back in the 90s, but this one right here in Freakazoy, when he played Dr. Mystico, he just went at it. Like, he looked like he had fun doing it, especially with the window line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah <laughs> he did. He he did. And he 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 went absolutely insane. And uh <laughs> and 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 it was it was kind of like it it was it was a blast. And you have to remember when we did Freakazoid, mm -hmm. um we would record it, I think, at two o'clock in the afternoon on okay. like a Wednesday. And we would get Baroni's pizza and we would have the pizza there at one o'clock. Okay. Now normally, normally when you're doing a session, most of the voice actors come in at like 155, right? Mm -hmm. And they're like, okay, I'm in, I'm I'm out. But our our cast would kind of filter in around one. So I remember once it's time we had like I think it was Tim Curry and all those guys and and David Warner was filming Titanic and he would be driving down from Long Beach and I don't know I was in a bunch of water today and, uh, <laughs> you know, and then and then Rick, Ricardo would be like I was in a water picture once you know and then it's like it was like this it was like this round table of all these actors sitting and it was the most magical and they're all eating pizza and like juice is running down their things. Oh my and go, God. I remember that. And, and they started always coming in around one o'clock and shooting the breeze for like an hour. before. And then Andre would... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Right at the best part. And no. That, um, yeah. That Andre, take it from there, Paul. And oh, Andrea. so... So then Andre would come in, you know, like at 155 and say, guys, we all go into the booth. We got a show to do. And then everyone would be like, okay. Like, you know, <laughs> like, we were having a good time having, have, having pizza. And the other thing I'll say, and, yes. and Tom can attest to, to this, is that um, the way Andrea would do it is the cast would do an entire read through. Mm -hmm. before we actually rolled tape or oh. sometimes we would we would roll but that was just uh, as a safe safety but but that way the cast having read an entire the entire script once could sign oh i oh I, that's joking that joke wasn't what i thought it is you know i'll do this or i'll do do that and uh, and that i think and we did that on animaniacs uh, and that's not done today at all. You no. never do a re read through. And and I think that that Tom, do you think that helped with a lot? Oh, of absolutely. I mean, they yeah. they got the context of everything they were saying, which yes. again, they're, they're not they're just doing single lines nowadays. So they really uh, became real acting participants. They were making yeah. the story work. Uh, yeah. Also, let's see. Uh, either Tom Madek or Harry Andronis would be at the engineers on a lot of these recordings. Oh, and right. You know, so when Tim Curry's going over the top and, and you get one take, uh, these guys were geniuses at, because, you know, that could have blown the mic out easily, but they were ready right. for him. They knew he was going there. And so uh, we had we had really the A team on this coming and going. Yeah, we did. We did. Nice. That's amazing. Oh. That that is like you're you're right. Um, I've noticed that more and more with when I because uh, I pay attention more to animation than I do live action stuff. And I noticed that yeah, what you guys said. It's like there no animation does not follow the same traditional standards of, uh, that it did back then. There is no record. Actors don't record together to kind of get the energy captured. Now they record se separately, so they have to imagine the other person there, and they don't do table reads. Well. They do table reads, Simpsons but it's... Does. Simpsons does do a table yeah. read, yeah. Uh, yeah, but I, I notice table reads are more fun when they're doing them at, you know, like, conventions or just um, as a fun little 
video or commentary, but they don't do them before they have to record. So that way they know the lines, they know the context, and that way it helps them kind of be on the same page, uh, so to speak. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah, no, that that's that's exactly that's right. that's true. And the other other thing that happens is uh little accidents, like little goofs happen and then it makes us laugh in the booth during the uh during the re rehearsal and then it's like well just say that that again or or do that or uh mm -hmm. i remember once for the for the candle gym episode um kenneth mars you guys know who kenneth mars yes is? yes i know who he is so, i love him so kenneth kenneth mars is like i mean he he, <laughs> uh -oh. he glitched he glitched oh He's, sorry he, you know he was uh, yeah go ahead paul yeah, Kenneth Kenneth Mars was in um, you know Young Frankenstein. Yes. He was in um, oh, yeah. uh, what is the, the one? Uh, what's the up, Doc? The, the producer. What's up? Yeah. What's up? What What's up, Doc? And uh, and Kenneth Mars just came in and and he goes, "How would you like me to do this?" And we're like, "Can you do it? Hey, can you do it like the remember um, remember <laughs> Young Frankenstein? Can you do it like that that guy?" And he's like, "Yeah, I, I guess. Okay, you yeah, do that." And so he just did the young Frankenstein guy. It was it was hysterical. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Kenny Mars. Kenny Mars. Kenny Mars, a wonderful guy. I kiss him. A bear of a guy. I love him. <laughs> <laughs> that, that that is that's, that's that's just so awesome. Uh, again, that's that's probably a testament to. I, I I'd say all the shows. It's not just one show, but it's all shows. It's like the shows that Tom you produced and Paul that you worked on, but I think Freakazoid was kind of the last one. It was the pinnacle of, okay, um, we, we do what we do. We have fun with what we do, but at the end of the day, we're like, we don't want to go home and just feel like, well, that could have gone better, or maybe I could have done that better, or maybe this could have been written a little better. It was all just, it felt like, it sounded like uh, Freakazoid uh, just had everything, even though there was a rush to get it through, it doesn't sound like there was any dread like uh, after you found out it's like okay thank god it, it worked we're we're doing good we're happy well, we had we had brilliant directors on each episode too we yes. had uh scott gerald ronnie del carmen dan reba uh eric radomsky yes. um uh mitch shower um uh, i forget i think i missed somebody but uh jack Hyder. uh we yeah. had these guys you know not that they were old people, but they were veterans of doing great, great work. Yes. And uh, what they brought to each episode, uh, they brought a lot of themselves and they had great crews. I mean, these shows look beautiful. Uh, yes. Many of them are just fantastic looking. And, uh, you know, uh, none of them, none of us had worked on Freakazoid prior to him showing up on that September uh, yeah. morning. Mm -hmm. And uh, there he was, fully alive. Yep. Yeah, and the other thing I'll just I'll just add to what to what Tom said is like you know you, you would write it, we would record it, it would get animated, it would come come back, and then kind of sometimes the real work began because you'd put it together and then you would just either extend a joke or you would add a, you know, <laughs> like you were ta ta talking about adding the live action stuff. It was like it never left the editing room until we were all laughing. And yes. so we did, we did Tom, especially in the first, first season, did so much work in the editor room of, of like, uh, we're not laughing yet. And, and sometimes <laughs> it was a matter of extending something or, or shortening something or, or I remember one uh, time we were doing a scene. I think this might've been se second season where Freakazoid, uh, it, it's Dexter's date and Freakazoid got zapped and he's kind of okay. acting weird. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. And Cosgrove Kos says, hey, Freakazoid, uh, do you want to go out for a fat-free yogurt? And Freakazoid's <laughs> like, uh, not now, Cosgrove. I have to go do something. So he's, he does his arms in the air and starts yeah. to run away. <laughs> yes. and, and then he ran away, and we're like, huh, that's not very funny. And then Al Breitenbach was like, well, what if I just kept it going for a, like a really long time? And we're like... <laughs> And we're like, well, can you can you do that? He goes, give me a minute. <laughs> <laughs> he starts playing around, and we were we were using Avid there. I think it was first generation yeah. Avid, like it was yeah, the yeah. first time. And he did some things, and the next, and then he pressed play, and Freakazoid literally does that cycle. 
I think the first time we did it, it went on for like 40, 45 seconds. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I call it the and, treadmill. <laughs> yeah, and we're, we're we're like maybe maybe not forty five seconds, uh, yeah. but maybe twenty. Um, yeah, yeah, yes. and that's and that's exactly what we saw. So, so again, it it every every division had their opportunity to sort of boost the comedy and do something weird. Yeah, very good. That's a great ad point. Yeah, I like that. I like that. It sounds like it was a it was a team effort. It wasn't just yes, uh, it was. Everybody got to be involved. Everybody got to contribute. It wasn't just it wasn't just uh, a a singular set of people. Everybody was there to help bring Freak is away yeah. to the best it could be. And There's that's a great little happened. bit that Paul added uh, in one of the shows. Really? Uh, uh, that at the very end of the show. Uh, I don't know how you got this done. Uh, did Rich Aaron's animate it for you? But Gene McCurdy's little head <laughs> body pops out at the end of the show. Well, how does this happen, Paul? What was this? So, so uh, you guys know, um, obviously, um, in P Python, the Terry Gilliam oh, okay. did all the animation. Right. Yeah. Oh, the cutout nice. sort of animation. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And so uh, we thought it would be funny <laughs> to have Gene McCurdy's head bounce in at the end and say, and I used to do it in a Gene McCurdy, in McCurdy impression, like, and be like, <laughs> oh, 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 and I said, on behalf of everyone in Ordnance Animation, we want to thank you for watching our fun programming. And then, <laughs> and I still am not quite sure why, we decided to have Bob Daly and Terry Semmel, who were like the the heads of Warner Brothers, yeah. not just of Warner Brothers Studio, but the head of Warner Brothers they come were in co wearing co-chairman co of the studio. Right. And we put them in money like dollar sign suits uh, <laughs> with bags of money <laughs> over <laughs> over a sweatshop. <laughs> oh, and background. they came in linking arms and dancing, going, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And we just thought that was the funniest thing ever. Um, and we we had it animated. I don't think we sent it overseas. Someone did it just I think we did it right in-house, yeah. Yeah. And um <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't think they appreciated that little joke that we <laughs> it, was, it was pretty funny. It was pretty funny. But it was stuff stuff like that. And then we would bury Long, ridiculous things in the end, end credits that were just really dumb. Yes, um, yeah. the Freakazoid comes out at the end yeah. of the end credits, right as the song yeah. pauses the beat, and then he just says something like yeah. little, like little PSA more, uh, mo uh, morals. Yeah. Uh, one of them was, one of them was, go wake up your parents and tell me you're hungry, quick. <laughs> That's the one that made me laugh. One was I think I can relate to that here's one. A sound, because... Here's a sound that you don't want to hear at 3 a.m. <laughs> right. I think I can, I can relate to the first one that Paul mentioned because I, as a kid, I used to wake up my parents and tell them I was hungry. <laughs> I did the exact same thing. Like, as soon as you said it, I go like, sure, why not? <laughs> <laughs> but I did it before Freakazoid could tell me to do it. <laughs> hey, Paul, tell them about Jack Valenti. Oh, yes, Jack. Is Paul oh, there? Oh. There yeah, go. I'm here. I'm here. Uh, so, so Jack Valenti was president of Motion Picture Association of America. He's obviously a very big guy, and uh, yes, I was going to write the Freakazoid origin story, and I always like to do something weird at the beginning. So, for no good reason, I said, uh, "Now, ladies and gentlemen, the president of Motion Picture Association of America, <laughs> Mr. Jack Valenti," and then, and then I thought, "Well, it'd be funny." So then I started writing, "Hello, I'm Jack Valenti, and these are my cheeks." <laughs> These and are my, he showed these his cheeks. cheeks. These. these are my cheeks. And uh, <laughs> a lot of people have asked me, uh, yeah, and it's just this stupid rant to get us in into the episode. Anyway, yes. I, I wrote it. That, that was it. We sent it off to Stephen. Uh, Stephen liked the episode, and he came back with this note. And the note was, you know, I can get you Jack Valenny. <laughs> and, oh, my God. And we're like, well, that's we don't really want Jack Valenti, but I mean, if you want us to use him, so he goes, yeah, I really want you to use Jack Valenti. Be funny. He's a good friend of mine. He owes me a fa favor. Uh, <laughs> nice. And he then favor? you just want him to come in and do that, and he goes, no, 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 ha have him do something funny about the rating system. And I'm like, wait, what? So, <laughs> something funny about the rating system? Yeah, be a hoot. Um, 
So remember, remember that Tom and Tom, yeah. you came in and said, look, Stephen wants you to write something funny about the radio. Yeah. So, <laughs> and I'm like, okay. So Jacqueline was going to, so I wrote this real dumb, dumb thing. And then Jacqueline, and he had, a, and Jacqueline had like a felt board where he's putting yeah. symbols of like the different members of your family yeah. on the felt board. Yeah. Right. He explained G, PG, PG 13, X and NC 17. And, yeah. uh, and he came in, uh, obviously he didn't, we didn't do a group record with him cause he was Jack Valeni and that would have scared him a lot. So he, he came in by himself and he just sort of came in as Jack Valeni and, where should I sit? Where should I sit? What should I do? And he, you know, and we sat him down, we gave him a microphone, and then he started reading. Yes. Uh, we started recording. He goes, Hello. He's, and he read the script. He goes, Hello, I'm Jack Valenia, and these are my cheeks. And I, <laughs> it only occurred to me. It, it only. Yeah. 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 A little break up here, but. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it, it only occurred to me at that moment when he said that, that I had never thought about the fact that Jack Valeni would be saying, hello, I'm Jack Valeni and these are my cheeks. Like, did Jack Valeni, was he proud of his cheeks? Was he embarrassed about his cheeks? I, I didn't really know, but, but uh, yeah. And then at the very end, he did, he did the whole thing. He did it great. And then he said, uh, are, are we done? We go, yeah. He goes, all right, record. He goes, hit record. And Tom, <laughs> you were there. He goes, hit record. And he goes, Anyway, the only reason I'm doing that is because Steven Spielberg is a friend of mine. <laughs> okay, we're, remember that, Tom? Yes, so yeah. Tom, 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 Tom is like, oh, we're leaving that in. <laughs> <laughs> right? Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> and then we, we even had Jack and Lane say stupid things like, um, and now a scene, of a, a scene of a man wrestling a bear for no reason. <laughs> Just like all this random stuff that Jack Valenny who was in the airplane when J when LBJ was sworn in after Johnson. the assassin? It was like like I, oh, it broke up again. When oh, people no. want to, you can't imagine getting these serious important people on the planet doing such uh -uh. silliness. Yeah, yeah, no, it's crazy. There you go. Well, everyone, I have to leave soon, unfortunately. Oh no, it's okay. Thank you, thank you for being here. Uh, I actually have one more additional question, um, and I can and I can talk to you privately about this. But my birth, since the show is coming, since the show is going to be celebrating it, both I and the show will be celebrating our twenty fifth birthday. I have, I have I have a question. Uh, can 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 I send both my DVD copies to both of you to sign because I love the show so much, and Paul, you're so awesome. You really are. I'm I believe we can we can make an arrangement for that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Paul, of course. Thank you. Yeah. Also, yeah. Can, uh, can I ask Paul? I like to ask him, like, yeah. "Hey, uh, Freakazoid, do you want to go eat a mint?" Do I? <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he was waiting for that. Yes. <laughs> Humanoid was waiting for that moment. I could tell. Yes. <laughs> then. The, or as, as John McCann wrote, then let's all together go now. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> all right, everybody. Thank Thanks you, Paul. Lot, everybody. Take care, Paul. Okay. Take, Take care. care. Thank, Thank you, you, Paul. Bye, guys. See you, Paul. Thank you all for joining so much. Sorry if your questions didn't happen. It was such a short time we had, but it was such a great time as yes, well. Yes, it was so short. Also, sweet. thank you, Richard, for your time as well. Thank and you. also, if you want to put your Twitter plug in here, you could do it in the chat. I probably should have done that earlier. I was putting theirs in there. Yeah. Obviously, and also, humanoid freak. This is tech, his first episode, one twenty six. So I haven't been Ooh. in every episode, but I definitely been in. I would say probably majority. I would say I'm in most episodes. If yes, no, and I also want to give a special shout out to the fan. Um, I feel bad that I can't remember his name, uh, his Twitter handle, but thank you uh, to the fan that that tagged us and asked us, could we interview Paul? Um, because oh, if imagine it, if, if you could get Paul up on yeah. that. Yeah, yeah so that's what started this all, wasn't it? Yes, yes, exactly. So, and we, oh, thank you. There he is. There he is. Yes, <laughs> Richard111. Thank you again uh, for, you know, getting the ball rolling on this. We, we did. It was like, it, it, it was great to be back and great to talk to um paul and tom again about freakazoid it was very short like like 
Nidge said, but I kind of expected that because these guys, unfortunately, they have lives, they need to do stuff, so they can't give us like two yeah. hours worth of their time. But what they did give us, I think, was very good because, um, again, I they 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 made they made us laugh and they gave us great insight onto the show. So I think that that's very good, and this is a great way to kind of celebrate Freakazoid's 28th anniversary coming up in three months. We should probably get going because yeah. this is this has just been a freakazoid one. But again, yeah. I love talking to those guys. They're so hilarious. Yeah. And again, thanks so much for having me back on, guys. Even if I showed my rust and I didn't, I wasn't completely on fire as much as I that was. That was you, Russ. No, no man. That, yeah, yeah, like, no, I, I, you I told like you, professional. I, I told you before we started. I said, dude, Richard's getting. Just don't worry about. It. He was nervous, human. I'm like, don't worry about it. Just, just watch. Just watch Richard. He's yeah. got. It. He's going to start off a little bit kind of eh, but all of a sudden, just once he hits the ground, he's going to be like eh. Pff, yeah, it's like, like it, it's <laughs> literally it's literally like riding a bike. Like, yeah. it, it is. It's like it's like riding a bicycle. You, yeah. The muscle memory will come back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, all right, yeah. cool. Well, anyways, thanks, everybody. Words, and we'll uh, talk to you all later then. And if you want to say uh, goodbye, everybody. Yeah. Bye, guys. And then also, in the words of Dexter's mom, have a good time now. Mm-hmm. Uh,